All right, so in this video, I want to go a little bit more into the concept, but also a walkthrough of uh, retargeting as a whole, why you need to be doing it, and how it kind of works. Um, so as you can see here, I have a couple custom audiences that have been created. What I call uh, retargeting audiences, these are going to be audiences that have been creating, uh, created off of something else. Um, so let's just say we had, well, let's look at it right here and say we have 75% of people that view main ad slideshow. So this is showing us that there's 11,000 people that have viewed 75% or more of the actual um, ad slideshow that was up there. So the other video that we have, 50% or more, 17,000 people done that. Um, and then these are going to be lookalike audiences. And I'll touch on that in a second. This one's website traffic. So uh, let's actually look at look up lookalike audiences right now. Um, so lookalike audience, all you have to do is come in here and then say you want to create a lookalike audience off of that campaign. Um, then you can go ahead and go to location. I usually just go to browse country. There's North America. There we go. North America, United States. Bam. So I add that on there, United States. You can add multiple different countries on there. You can do other stuff. So say somebody looks like somebody that's in the United States. You can do English speaking countries, um, all that kind of stuff on there. And uh, what I was talking about in the other video, basically a one to a 10 is gonna be, you know, uh, almost a duplicate profile to, um, it's gonna be almost a duplicate profile to, you know, 10 is, uh, we both like animals, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So it, it shows a much, much different range in um, the level of quality customers that are on there. Uh, so you can do show advanced options down here. Um, and then it's going to show you uh, different results based on different segments. Uh, so you can say, okay, these are the different ones here. So if I did a 1%, 2%, or 2% to 5%, you know, these different audiences right here, um, it'll uh, help create those number of audiences right here. It'll help create those audiences, uh, but it's also telling me what my estimated reach. So I'm going to cancel this one because I don't want to create that. Uh, but now you understand how to create a lookalike audience. It's done off of custom audiences. Uh, so creating a custom audience, you go in there. And actually, let me touch on saved audiences real quick. So if I go to saved audiences, um, this one you, looks very familiar because uh, this is the exact same panel you get when you're actually creating an ad. Um, so you can go through here, you can fill everything out, and say you wanted to use this audience multiple times, you didn't want to have to plug all that data in, and maybe you wanted to change the age to, you know, uh, 35 to 55 on one and uh, 34 down to 24 in another or you know whatever kind of thing you're doing those little changes you just go in here you create one uh, uh, an audience you want you create that audience and then uh, you can also create a look like audience off of that but the more important thing is you can then when you're creating your ads take that saved audience just plug it in and you don't have to keep doing um, different addresses and uh, radiuses and all that kind of stuff as long as those are going to be very similar between uh, what you're doing so custom audience, uh, let's touch on that real quick and then we'll kind of go into the, the theory of why you're doing retargeting. So your customer file is, uh, say you have an email list, you have a phone list, something like that, please make sure it is approved. And when I say approved, I mean people have actually given you permission. Don't just put stuff on there that uh, nobody has given you permission. Facebook is cracking down like crazy. I would never upload a list like that. I know in the past a lot of people have done that. They've had a lot of success with it. Just don't do it. Um, all the stuff that's been happening lately, just don't, don't do that. Uh, website traffic, pretty simple. Um, I'm going to show you how to take the pixel. Basically, it's just a little snippet of code. Put it on your website. Um, once it's on your website, it's going to go ahead and track everything that's kind of going on. Um, after it tracks that, it then puts it in here. So we can say website traffic, any and all, right here, um, completed any of these actions or all of these actions. Uh, so say we're using that pixel right there, boom, because we're on that account. All website visits, uh, people who visit specific pages, so we can do this one. Um, contains, doesn't contain, or equals. Um, I usually put contains just because contains is a lot easier. Um, contains, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, there's a dash or uh, no no dash or, you know, no forward slash or this. You know, it's going to give you that kind of stuff on there. So say you have, you know, uh, contains cats is like in the top. Uh, URL, all your products that have the products of cats, boom, it's going to plug all those URLs in there and it's going to show it there versus, um, you know, if you put in, you know, forward slash cats and it's not forward slash cats, it's actually, you know, um, category dash cats, you know, that kind of stuff. So we can include more. Okay, we can also do 
uh, page views. Oh, sorry, that was events. Uh, visitors time spent. So visitors time spent. Actually, a web page. Same thing. You can put your stuff in there, right there. Um, pretty self-explanatory. How much time they spent on your actual site. Sorry, I might have been hitting that there on my uh, my face. Uh, bam! There we go. Uh, so let's say all. So let's go with here. So I switched it to all here. So instead of or, now it has and. Um, so it's people that did this and people that did this. Uh, so maybe they visited that page, but then um, you know whatever uh, doesn't contain. Bam. So that way, any page but that page up here. Um, or different, you know, there's so many different uh, remarketing ways that you can do this on your website. Say somebody went and added to cart, but they didn't get to your thank you page uh, or your checkout page. Um, Shopify, I don't think your checkout page you can actually do unless they change that one. But when you're setting that up on Shopify or one of those ones, I believe the checkout page is actually through like a Shopify.com uh, domain and it's not through your own. Uh, it kind of diverts traffic so it doesn't have your actual pixel on there. So you can kind of get why that's not going to actually work as a domain. But you can say, you know, they added to cart but didn't get to the thank you page because if they didn't check out, they wouldn't have gotten to the thank you page. You can go on here and say, you know, people that met this criteria but didn't hit this site or that you know all that kind of stuff to create those um, or a much simpler version uh, landing pages uh, when when I do a lot of landing pages for local clients and now for uh, more e-commerce people as well uh, especially for sending them on to Amazon or something like that you can say um, you know people that visited this blog but didn't visit the sales page and then we want to send those people back to the sales page. That way they, you know, check out the sales page and then we push them on to Amazon or uh, people that, you know, spent little time on there or, you know, whatever it is. It's usually a little bit easier with local businesses because you have a thank you page and you have the um, opt-in page. So you can say, okay, people that went to the opt-in page didn't get to the thank you page or exclude everybody that got to the thank you page because I don't want to run ads to those people. They've already opted in. It doesn't make sense to run ads to them. App activity, uh, yeah, we're not really doing that. Offline activity, you basically upload your lists. It's pretty simple. And you have other stuff that happened too. Um, basically, this is what's just going to say uh, these are events that are happening on your pixel. Uh, and then engagement, this one's the most interactive one. Uh, so you have your videos, you have your lead forms, full screen experience, Facebook page, Instagram business profile, and events. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, on these ones, say uh, on a lead form right here, you know, who opened the lead form for whatever. Didn't submit, blah, blah, blah. you guys get the, the point of this. It's much more of a simplistic version of the website one. And as we go down here, um, your Facebook page, you can say people who uh, engage with your page or visited or clicked or whatever in the past, whatever time period. Uh, maybe you have a funnel that you, you wouldn't want 365 on there. You maybe want, say, in the last 30 days or the last 15 days, you want people that have interacted because you did a huge blast in that product that you just launched. You want to mainly get those people. Yes, of course, there's other people that might have interacted with your page, but um, if it's you know more of a broad page, but if it's a very specific page or something like that, um, you still may have other visitors that weren't part of that launch, and you really want to capture those people that were part of that launch versus marketing people 30 days ago that came to your site and they have no idea that you have the new product until you start to get your per pixel data um, kind of used to what's kind of going on and the people that went to the launch, you know, get them coming back and back and see who's purchasing and then open it up to more and more people as you kind of get more and more sales because uh, then your pixel can optimize better for, um, you know, I mean, you throw it out to everybody in a certain area, it's going to say, okay, these people out of this area, I'm going to show it to the, these people versus um, if you had no pixel data and you threw it out to everybody, you wouldn't know where to go. That's why you start small and then go larger into more days or other stuff like that. So hope that helps with uh, right here doing lookalike custom audiences, um, save profiles. I think that's or saved audiences. I think it's pretty much it on that one right there. But uh, now I want to kind of go into a little bit of why you want to actually uh, retarget. Uh, we touched on this as we went through each item. The main reason is so that way we can get people back to do whatever action that you want.
Um, same thing of why you're collecting an email address from most people. Same thing of why you collect a phone number or you have a opt-in on Messenger for a chat bot to interact with them. Um, all of this is going to create an audience for you so that way when you create this audience people can actually uh, be targeted correctly based on your materials. So you're not wasting uh, tons of money on other stuff and it's basically comes down to it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot cheaper to market to a remarketing audience. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to <laughs> advertise to a retargeting or remarketing audience than it is to a cold audience. Um, these people know you. It depends on what severity they know you in. Um, so if they watched, you know, a longer piece of your video or interacted with more content, uh, of course, it's going to be, you know, somebody that knows you a little bit better or at least knows the principles of your company. Um, and you remarket to that person different than somebody that watched uh, 20 seconds of your video or that kind of stuff. So um, the reason we want to do that is basically just to get cheaper ad spend. So that way we can have the people that we've already paid as a cold audience to come in and we can market to them again cheaper. And it also takes multiple hits. So I think right now it's up to seven or eight different uh, impressions you need before somebody even really knows your business, let alone starts really considering your business. And your window could be up to six months or uh, a year and a half. I think it's like 18 months is the longest for somebody to actually purchase from you. Um, and that goes along to if you're not going to sell these products long term, if you're not going to have these businesses long term, you're not going to do that kind of stuff, um, you're going to lose a lot of your sales. It's not really a business that you probably should get into. You should really look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, do I want to create an agency? Do I want to do my online store? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? And make sure it is something that you want to do. Because if you're not around in a year, um, and you might have missed out on a ton of sales in the last you know, 12 months of people that would have bought in month 11 and they started in month one with you and you just had to keep remarketing to them and getting in front of them and getting in front of them, warming them up to you, showing them more content, putting more blogs in front of them, just doing all that kind of stuff. Um, so I mean, it's much longer. I mean, even Facebook alone, they're experimenting with 28 days out from when somebody even clicked on your ads to if somebody purchases to even count it. Um, right now they do seven, but they're experimenting with, I believe it's like 28 days. I mean, that's a, that's a long time period. Uh, if you think about it from somebody to click on an ad to maybe they're thinking about it, they might not have even seen anything you're retargeting to them. And then they come back and they actually might purchase in seven to 28 days. That's a long time. And now you think of you may, you have a whole other part of your warm audience or your cold audience that, you know, saw a certain part of your video, maybe a small part or interact with your page or your website or something like that, and you need to constantly be getting in front of them, uh, whether it's YouTube or Google uh, Display Network uh, or Google Shopping Network or um, Instagram ads or stories or, you know, whatever you're trying to do, even Snapchat. Excuse me, even Snapchat ads if you want to. But all of this stuff comes down to uh, the principle of just getting in front of your customer over and over again. You don't have Coca-Cola and Nike and all those ones becoming brands because they put one up at one ad in front of somebody and said, oh, nobody bought, and then they just closed shop. No, they're around because they're always marketing to us. We're always seeing Adidas, um, you know, signs or this or that or celebrities wearing this stuff or Nike um, and then you got Coca-Cola they're constantly putting out commercials you got Pepsi and Coke and all these commercials and McDonald's and all these ones they didn't become these household names and these just crazy huge companies because nobody knew of them the only way, way you can actually become a big company is if people actually know who you are and that you exist um, I believe uh, I think it was Grant Cardone his quote was um, the biggest reason that people lose out on a sale is that people forget you so you don't want to be forgotten and retargeting does this for you automatically so that way you're not forgotten in people's minds um, and then you also use your automation for uh, email as well and you use text and use all these things on top of it but this type of uh, remarketing and retargeting will actually help you in the long run to make sure that uh, people that saw your product or interacted with you, they come back. Um, I get it. Some people you might want to just let go, but for the most part, you need to keep after people over and over and over again to make sure that they're seeing your product. All right. I hope this video helps you guys, and I will see you in the next one.